Yes. He's on it. He's always shares it right away. That's the first place it should always be shared, right? Hey, Sam. Check, check, am I on? Yeah. Check, check, am I on? Check, check, I can hear you. I, I'm really, on. I can't hear myself, though. Yeah, that's normal. You should hear okay. in that you're Yeah. I got a little echo. Yeah, me too. But I can't hear me talk at all. So usually the guys, they just put the, if it's annoying, you just put it around your neck. Okay. Make sure that it's on the side of your mouth. Yeah, I can do this. So yeah. I this, would, this would be a little bit better. Because I don't know how loud you're talking. No, it's good. No, I know, but... I know. <laughs> We're just trying to get the mic set up. We're here in Amsterdam, ladies and gentlemen. Amsterdam Billiards 14.1 Straight Pool League. The Gold Division. Regular season. We're going to watch Delsim play Zion's V. I'm going to guess these two monsters are playing even up. I don't think there's any spots involved. Uh, you guys know me as Fingers. It's Michael Bad Steubener in the booth. Mikey Bads. I'm in the booth with my good friend Lou hey. Soriano. Lou Soriano. From Bayshore. Bayshore Billiards and Straight Pool Fanatics. On yes, Facebook. Straight Pool Fanatics. If you guys like Straight Pool or Pool in general, you really got to be a member of his club there. Thank you. So this will be a good match. Zion has been playing good all yeah. season long. It should be a real good match. Uh, as Dell. Yeah, Dell's no slouch himself. <coughs> it is an even game to 150. Yeah. It's the Highlander versus ZZ Top. So Dell's gonna break. And if you're playing Zion, I mean he's he's come to the table, I think recently someone broke and he ran 188 balls on a guy. I just asked him that before the match, just to get all the details, and that's exactly what happened. He yeah. played Sam Islam, Sammy broke, and Zion ran one hundred and eighty nine balls. Yeah, and then scratched, scratched yeah. on the one eighty nine, so one eighty eight was one. All right, Dell laid out uh, not the greatest break. I mean, he is close to the rail, but Zion has a, a decent shot on the 12, and he just has to make the ball. And he's off and running. He's got a good shot in the 8. He can go into him right here. He'll have the 11 as uh, insurance. Yep. He doesn't have to hit these hard either. No. That's what a lot of people, I think, make the mistake. They think they have to overpower the break shots. Correct. And if you just level stroke, follow through, you're going to get something. A little unfortunate to come under the back of the rack there. He might have the nine in the side. See, this would be very unfortunate. Normally, you're going to get something. Yeah, the nine may be in play. It's hard to say. He's got the 11 in the corner if he wants it. Yep. And at this level, that is a makeable shot. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to play it, though. He could play the 13 straight up into the 15. Almost like a dead center ball. Maybe just drift it a little bit behind the 4 to the left. And then catch the rail with the 15 or the 13. 
and get him tied up under the four ball. Yep. Uh, I don't know if he's got any banks available. 14 might be in the way. He might be playing the nine in the side. That's what it looks like. Yep. Might go off the six. He might be playing this off the six. No, I played a soft spin shot. And uh, Dell's not so great break is not going to hurt him so much. Nope. What do, you, what do you see as a problem here, Lou? Well, right away I see the 270. Yeah. Um, and I think early on in the match, these guys are just going to look to get going. And Well, that's that's early early round jitters right there. Yeah, that's what I think. In fact, I don't think it's jitters. I just think it's too early in the match. No one's wake, awake yet. Yeah. And even, might, even the nine balls yeah. I played, I felt that way. Probably playing safe was the right thing to do for Zion, but he played aggressive, and that's okay. I like that. He's got to roll a 10 in. Yeah, and that uh, nice shot. miss by him didn't really hurt him. Dell got tied up on a ball. Uh, gave the table right back to Zion. He's pretty well open. Like you said, the only thing he's got to worry about right now is the 7-2. Right. See, I like the 14 to break up that 7-2. And I don't know if he's looking to shoot it now, but I, I would be inclined to shoot the 13 here on the bottom. Get back to center or 6. But I think he would play the 6. 13 uh, is a little too thin of a cut for right now. True. Now he should go after the... the that, Two seven. Uh, I think no matter what, he's either going to have the nine, the fifteen, or the four. Absolutely. You know, and he'll break that out. Yeah, but fourteen was the key ball to break those up. Well, he went into it pretty hard. I'm surprised he did that. And would you know it? Everything's doubled up. I would have just soft rolled it right in. I, agree. I don't think there was any need for that. There was plenty of balls here on the bottom of the pocket. Now I think I think what he should do is actually thin off the four and come back down to where he is now. But he might be trying a three ball combination. I wouldn't agree with that from here, to be honest with you. I wouldn't either, but he playing aggressive and oh, there you go. Nice shot. I'm a big fan of aggressive play. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, aggressive play wins. Yep. You can't be afraid to win. Absolutely. You know? You can't be afraid to go out there and try shots, because when they, you know, when they work, you get big dividends. You could run out from here now. Yep. Theoretically, he played a good, strong shot, and he was rewarded for it. So how do you address the one nine now, Mike? From here. Well, he can just uh, draw this a little bit and play the four. Uh, Ooh. See, I was thinking In he fact, was saving the four for his break oh, ball, Yeah, so. I was just looking. I don't think the 11 is a good enough break shot. I would have well. drew up a little bit. Just drew up a little bit. Yeah. Nate could have played the 13. He could have easily played the 13 or even drew back into the one from where he was. Right. But the 9, it looks like the 9 does go on the side. It does. So it's, he shouldn't have to worry too much right now. And what he can do right here is he plays the 4 a little bit, draws it a little bit, gets angle on the 13 and go into the 11. Oh, the 3 rather. I'm sorry. If you can yeah, roll forward and go into the three, push that out. Uh, that would be good. Uh, he's got too much angle for that, so he's got to play the he's got to play the nine now on the side. I don't think the eleven is playable. Is a break? Uh, I don't either. It might be. It might be. It's kind of hard to tell from the angle we got. Yeah, it looks a little low to me. And believe it or not, I think the one is not a terrible option for it's, a break ball well, if it's, nothing develops. It's not a terrible option. It's a horrible option. <laughs> well, but uh, correct. But with you know, that 15 at the top of the table, and if you got a right angle on it, it could work. Yeah. But not ideal. He's going to try and get that angle on a 13. And I think he overdid it. He can come one rail. He might be able to come one rail and bump the 11 out. You know, all he's got to do is push the 11 up two inches, two or three inches. See, that's what he's doing now. He's looking for that. 
He's going to play the 13 one rail, bump the 11, and have the three in the side. So being an amateur, a real amateur, I would have left that one there. I probably would have played the 11 and tried to bump that 13 or something to develop. I, I'd like having a guaranteed break ball right. than getting down to these last three balls and looking to develop something. Well, um, I, that's a strategy to have. Uh, I think the higher upper echelon players are less afraid of getting down to the last two or three balls to worry about a break shot, to worry about to worry about cr creating something. Right. You know, they're uh, they're more, confident. They're to get more, exactly. They're more confident that they'll work with something. Right. They'll find something out. Well, we're gonna find out right now. Nice. Uh, yeah, did a good shot there. He's gonna play the 15 in the side. And he ended up getting out of that rack. Uh, I believe it's 13 to 1, Zion. <laughs> Pascal is getting teased here by the waitress. But they just. Correct. All right, so he, like I said, he's not afraid of taking what the table gives him. Mm -hmm. Instead of just trying to leave one shot on the one, which is a bad shot, it's a steep angle, and you can, really can't get into the stack. You see, oh. Oh. fortunate not to go in, and I think he does have the five. Uh, he has the five, yep. Five, and I would think the eight would be next. He doesn't have to hit this hard either. He did. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, you can see the angle. You're going to come off the object ball. Right. And if it's favorable, you can hit it firm and know that you're not going to scratch. You'll get a chance to break some stuff out. And it gives you a high percentage of uh, continuing your run. So, Mike, let me ask you. Do you pick out a break ball this early in the rack? Or is it too soon? Uh, to me, it's a little too soon. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't look, uh, because he's limited from here. He, he might have the seven, which he might have to play now. I mean, yep. he, played, he played a bad shot there, and he let the cue get away. But he might be able to play the 12. Looks like he's going to try and cut the 12. Ooh. Yeah, he tried to cut the 12, but... He did hit the ball. Yeah. Not a foul. I, did, I the, believe he did. The, the 12 did move. No, I don't know. Minus one? Oh. I thought I saw it. it see, that's one thing, too, about being in the booth. We're not allowed to make a call. Correct. They're really not even, if there's a ref involved. Look Ooh. at this thing full following there. Yeah, if there's a ref involved, we're not allowed to even say anything. Correct. They can come to us for a replay or something, but... Nice recovery from Dell. Yeah, Dell's going to have to settle down a little bit and, and play some pool today. <clears throat> Being the married type that he is, I don't think he gets a chance to hit the balls as much <laughs> as he'd like. Uh, that which is, uh, you know, that's one of the banes of all pool players. Yes, it is. Marriage and a job. Yes, it is. I stopped playing for 18 years for that very reason. <laughs> well, you couldn't tell. I mean, you're stroking balls in left and right. It, I Thank see you, what sir. you're doing there. You can't sneak one no pass me there, buddy. <laughs> I, I ain't falling for that stuff. Thank you, sir. Now, he's got the one. It looks like the three. You can play the three on the side, which would be perfect. But he's got to play the 10 now. He's got to deal with the 14 and four. He's not in too much trouble. I mean, he's also got the 12, it looks like. <clears throat> yeah, so... What I yep. see here is 13. If he lands good on the 3, maybe he can get the 3 in the side. But well, do you think he wants to get on the 14 and he's, manufacture yeah. the four ball? I don't think, ball? no, he's not going to try and manufacture anything, I don't think. 
But I think what he does have to do is he's got to either get the four or the 14 out of there. Okay, the three's in a pretty decent spot for a key ball. Yep. But he's got to get one of the balls out down here, the four or the 14. Correct. So that he can get other position to get back on the other ball. Right. But if I that think makes sense. It does, but I think he's got to burn the thir three ball here. Yeah. So, bye-bye key ball. I think he tried to draw that one really good on a 14, which he did. And now I think from here he can play, uh, again, he can play anything he wants. But I, I would get rid of the 14 and maybe come one rail for the four, four, nine, seven, four, seven, nine, one. If he gets good from here, he can play the seven, nine, four, and then come one rail. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. But he's got a little angle on the seven. I don't know if he can draw it now and get above the nine where he needs to be. He should be able to. I think he can. He decided to play the four, nine, one. That's fine, nice. too. Yep. Yep. So do you draw up from here, or do you go to the long rail and spin out? Uh, if he's straight in, I just roll forward. But he had an angle. He drew. Right? He, he drew. More angle than I think. Yeah. And he overhit it, to be honest with you. I think he's got to play to nine and go three rails. The one is a little high. He overhit it. He's going to be straight. Yeah. That's one of the tough things about straight pool. If you're out of line at the end of the rack, yeah. you know, like he did, he, I think he overpowered the four. He got past the nine. Then he had to go three rails to get on the one here. Absolutely. You know, you overpowered a shot. Um, wrong position, bad angle. Now, now once you got to start traveling with the cue, you open yourself up for mistakes. You overhit it, you underhit it. Absolutely. You, know, you knock into it, God forbid. And that's the whole game, I believe, in straight pull, is really having tight position, your last three, four balls. And, yeah, and rack. And, and, and end of rack pattern is, uh, is big, the last three or four balls. Good effort there. Nice stroke by Dell. No reward. Yeah, he's just going to cinch this. Zion knows how to play the game, so. Yes, he does. You might see him come off the 12 and come right back into the stack. I decided to go off the 8 a little bit and stay under it. That works, too. Hard to see what he has here, but... This is where you got to learn how to read the rack. Absolutely. Because I think he can almost play the eight straight in the face. Jacked up a little bit. And force the ten and six out. They still have protection. Well, he decided to be aggressive. Yep, and he left the 11 out. He did. That's a no-no. Yeah, Dell looks a little frustrated, but that well, usually means that he's going to get on a run. I've seen him do it against me. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very possible. Although Zion played a, didn't get as much right on it. He wanted to be out a little further to play the four ball. Absolutely. And now he's in a bit of a spot. So he's looking like he's going to play aggressively here. He's he not could. Looking duck. He could. He's not looking you know, to duck. It's not like they're playing for thousands. So if he wants to be aggressive and go at it. Nice shot. Good hit. And now for his next trick. Yep. 13 in the side. Yeah. And again, these are pretty forgiving pockets. They're not four and a quarter. Right. So <clears throat> just roll it in. Don't need to overpower it. 
you, you figure you're going to end up with something, which he did. So he's looking pretty good from here. Uh, yeah, he still has some work to do. So from here, do you like getting out to the center of the table and maybe playing the 10 to break them up? I absolutely like getting to the yeah. center of the table. That's what I thought. I see a lot of players play the bottom ball and go into the bottom of the stack, that's which that's works in breaking balls open, but well, most not, times you don't have a shot you're after. Not, you're not guaranteed a shot. Correct. So in a sense, playing something like that's a mistake. Absolutely. Yeah, but people don't look at it that way. You know, it's, you played the wrong shot for the right reason. <laughs> yep. You know. So he might be able to improve the 14 as a break ball here and have the 15 in the corner. If, if the, yeah, if the 14 is out, I yeah. actually, I kind of like drawing. Hard, hard to tell from here. It looks a little low. And again, we can't tell the exact yeah, angle. Can't. But he could, he could, it looks like he can play the 12 and drew above the 14. Maybe. For the 2 or the 15, maybe. But I, I don't like going into it. Okay, and that's, he didn't either, obviously, so that's a good shot. Now, he could play this with inside left, uh, right, come two rails under the 8. So that last shot is a perfect example of things I do wrong. <laughs> well. I'd like to nudge that, maybe improve it. Not, yeah, I have it, the 15 or the 2 as insurance, yeah. and then... You tie up the 14 with the 6. So yep, or you knock it, it, you knock it out of position. Yep. yep. Well, it's, again, it's, it's it, when you, especially when you have a shot like that, it's, it's kind of hard to realize this is good enough. Yeah. You know? Take what the table gives you it, sometimes. Well, that's, you've known me a while. That's, <laughs> you know, people out there, I used to, I, if I teach or instruct people, I tell them to listen to what the table tells you, which sounds kind of crazy, but... The table dictates what you have to do, and it's if true. you can hear what the table is telling you to do, and you can execute, the chances of you being successful go way up. Because I'll be honest with you, the table is never wrong. That's okay, true. the table is never wrong. As a pool player, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be wrong, but the layout of the table, you can't argue with the layout. And if you can figure out what it's telling you to do, you'll be that much more successful. Well, I gotta start listening to the table more often. I try to talk back to the table. No, <laughs> no. The table is never wrong. All right, so here's a very tough shot, I feel, because it's gonna be hard to hold it for the 15. Then play the 15 now. Yep. That was an awesome shot. You got just enough. You might have got too much. You might see him draw this one rail. Back to the end rail. Yeah, but you see where the pattern play comes into, you know, play here because you're really going around the table a lot. And you're drawing, you know, stop, stop, which is the ideal end pattern. Obviously, that's not always easy to do. But given uh, what he had, he got the most of it. He might he might have got enough. It's a very I think thin he did. Cut. See, to me, I, I would have drew it one rail to the end rail. No, we're up here. <laughs> he just he wants to take a picture with you. Get in a the picture. There you go. <laughs> because you can play that, and if you got a dead rail or something, you got no shot. If you play a good stroke with the draw, yeah. irrelevant what the end rail is going to do, you're going to have a shot. So he's got a thin cut. Well, he doesn't have to worry about opening up the pack. That's going to happen. So what do you do? You Focus gotta, on just, just pocketing the yeah, ball, right? Yeah, ball, a little above center. I would play a little above center, follow through. Awesome shot, unfortunate roll. I, I actually thought the cue was going to interfere with the 14. That happens a lot yeah. because you're thinning it so much, the 14 doesn't have a lot of speed. Right. And you're hitting it so hard, the cue is coming off Come that right rail off. right towards that pocket. Usually you knock the ball out of the pocket. You don't follow it in, but... Well, Del said thank you very much. Yes, he did. So here right away, I look for break balls. Call me crazy, but I look at them almost immediately if one presents itself. And right now I see the 6-8. 
look like good end balls here. Eight being key ball, six being a break ball. Okay, well, you right. Uh, I think it's a little too early to look for a break ball, mm -hmm. only, only because you got four or five balls in the center right there that you have to deal with. Absolutely. You're going to go into them. You can create something else. Uh, you, you can't really work around leaving the six. You mm -hmm. might need that to go into them. Well, I see from here, come off the seven, get a nice angle on the four. You can do that and break him out and with the four. And then he has a two yep. in he, the he side might. as he, insurance. He might, only because uh, I don't think the three is going to move. Well, he uh, he's got to play this with like a high ball and come one rail. Almost play this to get on the eight. Okay. Yeah, you I see? like that. I like the Because if, if he tries to go forward, maybe, he might stick behind the three. Yeah. You know, but you got to play to a different ball. And, and I don't like the, be, you know. And I like the speed he hit it with. Yeah. He didn't yeah. try to cream him. He didn't have to, but he got enough just to get on on that eight. Right, but how many times you see players, they think because you're going in the balls, you got to smash them. No. Not always. No, because what you end up doing is you end up knocking balls away from your break. You end up knocking them close to the side pocket on a rail. More times than not, you're leaving yourself with a worse position. So I think the five ball would is a good key to the key ball. In other words, five, two, ten, end pattern. Well, would have been. Gonna shoot it been. Off yeah. here, he's got to get rid of which it. Which is fine. I mean, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but that's how I see the table. Five, two, ten would have well, been ideal. He's got to pay attention here just a little bit because he does not want that 13 to go in. <laughs> which it frequently does. Behind, yeah. Or is it the 11? Might be the 11. And that's when you got to realize, well, your key ball isn't really a key ball. Just based on the layout. Mm -hmm. And again, he's got to watch out. He might not want to play position for the nine. He hit it. Uh, nice. All right, it was good. Sometimes, you know, if that comes off funny Absolutely. and it ends up on a short rail, now what do you do? That's what I meant by not playing position right. for the nine. Oh, I see. You know. Yep. But he's good from here. You can play just a uh, bottom left and come two rails for the thirteen or the same pocket. I would, I would like two rails. Oh, I don't like that at all. Yeah, you can still go to long rail. Nice, smooth yeah, stroke. Yeah, well, yeah, but you got all the English. Hit. I mean, a lot of things have to go right. Right. See? Did he get no, there? No. Nope. To me, that was not, not the right shot. Two rails mm -hmm. around the ball. You can either come above it or below it or forward or back. You give yourself so many different options. Yeah, I, I, I like the way he played it. I, I don't One not. rail. But well, I think he could have... Hit it with a little fuller stroke, left English, and spin out. Oh, right, well that, up, but again, a lot of things have to go uh, Well, that's right. what I mean. Right. Now, you, you're including speed, spin, throw, rail, 100%. distance. You know, it's... 100%. There's no, no need to incorporate all of that. 100% right. You know, if you're, if you're asking for too much, you know... This is something else I used to tell people. If you ask Santa Claus for a ton of stuff, you're going to get nothing. <laughs> you know? Oh, look out. Heads up. There's a happy fan. That went back to the seventh row, I think, Lou. 485-yard shot from Dell, the Highlander. Yeah, but usually, like I said, if you ask Santa Claus for too much, you get nothing. And that's exactly what he got. Dell got a laugh out of that. He heard you. Well, Zion's going to try and go into him here. A little above center, touch your right. He was able to go into him. I don't think he's got a great shot on the eight. You could thin it, but I'm not sure he's going to hit the stack. He might. He's going to glance and he's going way up table. Yeah, I don't think he hits a stack from here. He might even run into the two, which he didn't. Okay. You can play the one and a ten on the side. What a twelve. That's a ten. Ten on the side. It looks like the ten up top there. Yeah. Oh, he's playing it now. 
I like this. Here's where I was talking about earlier. Center ball. Uh, this Follow is the through. Wrong. Hit the stack. Oh, he. I was going to say that's the wrong shot for, okay. that, for that position. I know. I know the shot you're talking about. I would have played it to go into the stack there. It's a, I'm surprised he didn't. Well, he he did. He just wanted to just roll and get something. The problem with that is the angle that you're going into the rack. You're either going to hit above the three or below the three. Almost. It's very mm -hmm. tough. And if you hit the dead on the three, you could absolutely stick in the pack. I don't care what you got on it. But you're either going to glance off the top and go up table or glance right. off the bottom and come down table. Had he had hit it from the other side, you see he's got that row, row of balls right there, the 12, 5, and 6 right. it looks like. You, you're not glancing you're anywhere. Right. You know? So you're saying he was trying to just hit uh, he just wanted to, the top he, two yes, balls loose? He just wanted to rub into it and maybe push one out. Paid off. Dell's Dell's helping him out. Yes, he is. I love it when I play a match and I got two people on my side. <laughs> it helps me out tremendously. <laughs> Your opponent and yourself. Huh? Well, yeah. Hey, when you get two guys <laughs> shooting for you. My problem is that I'm too nice a guy. I usually end up helping my opponent out. That is not true. <laughs> Gotta get the 14 out of there. He's really got no problems. No. He's gotta go up for the two. <clears throat> so, call me crazy, but I think the two is a reasonable key ball too sometimes. Um, you don't have to worry about, or you gotta take care of it early in, in the uh, in the end pattern here, in my opinion. Well, How do you address balls like that, or I, layouts like this? I, again, you, you have to look and see what, what's on the table. Uh, I don't like leaving something up top, especially if you don't have to. Uh, he does have to go get it, which I think he does now. And it's another thing, if you've got a ball up table, a lot of players, like you said, you were thinking about maybe using it as a key ball. Mm -hmm. It's got its merits, yes and no. You know, and, it's, and that's all I'm saying. It's a reasonable it's, key ball, well, not that you leave it for a key ball. If, if you don't have to, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. There's so many better options. But also, you really can't leave it for the last ball before your key ball a lot of times because you need something to get on coming back down the table. Okay, so... Do you know if that makes sense? It does. And again, See, now he's got is Zion's ability... Well, he's going up for the two and then back down for the seven. Yes. You know, now to he's, me, I try to limit that. So It is. It, it, right. You don't want to do this. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Because there's no guarantee he's going to get perfect on the seven. You know, if he comes up short or he goes too much, right. and again, like you said, in caliber is iron, he's, he's probably going to overcome it. But if you can stay away, it's too much cue ball travel. Exactly. And that's you know. why I pointed out that the two ball was critical in that layout um, at the moment I pointed it out. And he got through it just yeah, fine. Yeah. Me, I would have been on the bottom rail here trying to drift well, the seven that's, ball in. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. It's, you got to go after him and get him. You don't have to be in a hurry to do it. Right. And you really can't wait to the very end because you have to have something to get on when you make the ball. Yes. You know what I'm saying? A lot, I see a lot of people, they shoot out all the easy shots down the table, then go up and get that two. And then they get nothing to get on. They can't come back right. down for another shot. Well, there you go. He's going to have an easy shot here. He's got a nice spread. Yeah, he's, he's everything open. No two balls touching. Nope. He's got a small issue with the 10-11, but 10 goes past the 13. Yeah, once he gets the 13 and 8 out of there, those go. He does have to start thinking about a break shot. Well... 14 looks like a reasonable break shot to me. Not saying that is the break shot, but that's what I see thus far. It could very, it could very well be. The only really trouble shot he's got is he's got to get on to 15, and that's not even really trouble. 
got to get on that somehow. Yeah, and I think based on the layout, he's definitely avoiding hitting the 14. Uh, That's why he didn't shoot the 13, I think. Stella. Stella. Thank you, sir. So he might be looking at the 14 as a break shot. And again, someone like Zion, uh, a, a lot of amateurs can look at the stack and not know if they will be able to make something happen. Right. They won't know that. You know, he'll he can tell. He can look at the stack and be like, "All right, I got I got stuff to work with. I got material here. I can make something." Absolutely. With. All right. A lot of amateurs they won't know that. Okay. So he might decide, you know what, I, there's nothing really here for me. I'm going to leave the 14. Right. Went into those nicely. And again, he really, he, he can play the 7-2 as a break. It's not ideal. Yeah, it's a little high. But again, he's, he's, he knows. Right. And with the three lane where it is, it's a nice key ball. Again, talking about a ta uh, yeah. ball up yeah. table that will serve as a uh, key ball. That was a nice shot. I think he wanted to go a little further. Yeah, but he's okay. He's got to pick a shot next. Yeah, I think the nine ball will be next in the same corner. Yeah. Not a little further than he wanted. Now he's going to shoot off the three. Yeah, this will get him on the nine. Well, another excellent key ball I find is bottom rail. Balls. Are you, are you like noticing a pattern here, Lou? Yes, I am, sir. So far, <laughs> you like the two, which is gone, the three, which is gone. He's going to shoot that off, too. I like everything, Mike. It's like food, you know? Well. i never seen a shot I didn't like. <laughs> well, at least you know what you got to work on. <laughs> this is true. I think Lou has had his breakthrough, ladies and gentlemen. You can now just draw this it is to, nice. Just draw it tuck above. right underneath, right? No, I'd have to look at it. I think he goes a long way around now. And again, uh, nice and easy. Well, that's the whole thing, nice and easy. He might not have that angle. He can just draw it one rail right above. Just draw it right above it. See? And he did nicely done. A lot of times, that's so much easier. And once again, because you're trying to go into the rail with speed and control, a lot of things. It, have to it's go a right. lot of things. It's, you ask for way too much, Lou. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> Now you know why I've never run more than 63 well, balls. here we go. <laughs> there, there you go. What do we got as a score? Zion looks like he's got 55, and Dell is trailing with 26. Okay, that is definitely not an insurmountable lead by I'm, any means. No, I'm, it's honestly it's closer than it looks. Yeah, I'm I, surprised I think it's by that, that score. I'm surprised Dell is that close. But we'll see if Zion's got anything to say about it. Oh, again, the, the rack's not really coming apart that well. He's got to play a jacked up shot on the nine ball. Yeah, on these tables though, it's not as hard as it looks. I think. He hits it pot with speed, a little accept it. Anything jacked up what? is exactly. you don't want to do it. He's about as level as you can be in this situation. Yes, he was. And, and right. they say it's I think he shot it a little fast. Well, a lot of times players will do that. But and it's something else that I try and tell people when I teach or give lessons. There, there is no such thing as an easy shot in pool. Absolutely not. There is no such thing as an easy shot. And the people have to understand that because something like that, you think, well, it's relatively simple. He's level. Right. You have to put 110% behind every shot you take. And what I like to tell people is that some shots are not as hard as others, but there's no such thing as an easy shot in pool. Well, and one thing I admire about your game, Mike, is you – actually apply that in your game you're a very intense player you're focused on everything and you well, play every shot like it it's game ball life or death i that's the way i play i mean why do i want to come down and play and not care right 
You know what I'm saying? Because to me, that just promotes poor playing. No, if you don't care, if you don't care here, you're not going to care in the tournament. You're not going to care in a money match or a gambling match. It just promotes bad habits. You don't stay down. You don't focus. You don't follow through. You don't set a pre-shot routine. And then you never have good results. For a guy who hardly plays, I don't do, I don't do too bad. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. I got to tell you. Me, I play to get out of the house. Yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah, when I when I when I'm really focused and trying to play full, I look at every rack, every table as a potential high run. Yeah, you're you're an intense at, player all the time. Meanwhile, Dell is chipping these balls away, and I'm going to predict the 15 ball being is going to be his key ball here. I I kind of like going after the 15 now, uh, before this shot. He'll be okay here. Roll this in. He'll have the four down here. He's going to use the 12. He might use the 15. No, he's going to use the 15, I think. I don't think there's any way you could land on the table where the 15 wouldn't be a good key ball, but it looks like he's going to shoot it off and no. elect to go for one rail on the 12 ball here and over. He had a little too much angle on the 12 That's to play that and get like on the 15. It. And he come up short again. Yeah, that's what I didn't like about that. <clears throat> With See? the 15 up there, Mike, I felt he could have come one rail to the uh, to the long rail or two rails and out toward the left-hand side of the table yeah, and have a good result. Well, um, you got to be perfect uh, coming that's, one rail That's the whole that. thing. Everything has to work right. Right. You know? Oh, nice. Just now, just now. Yeah, we're getting Is some. Is that just announced? Yep. We were just talking about this earlier. Nice. There, yeah, World 14-1 is now considering locations. Perfect. Oh, I love it. You guys are interested? You guys got to play this event, man. Well, Mike, you did pretty well last year. You were yeah. the Rocky Balboa of that tournament last year. I, I had a yeah, I had a good good showing. Absolutely, beating Johnny Archer, John Schmidt, and a tough loss to hometown hero Tony Robles. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, like I said, for a guy who doesn't play too much, I was amazing. I can't, amazing. I can't complain. <laughs> Looks like he's playing the five. Nice, five was wired. Yeah, good shot on the five. And it looks like. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Cheers, everybody. We got a couple of drinks. Gonna have a relaxing evening here. All right. He's got to look at the three nine. It might be wired. We're close enough to play it. It's close enough to play it, but it's a problem that should be addressed. Yeah, something like that you want to take care of sooner rather than later. And that's what he tried to do. He tried to nudge him. That's okay. Now, from here, i got to be honest. I kind of like going maybe two rails for the 15 on the side. I don't know if I like coming back. Yeah, I don't want to go into these balls. you you, you got to hit that too good, you see? Right. He's going to play the 15 anyway, but let the cue ball go. It naturally wants to move worked out well luckily well that's what I mean it worked you know that's, and that's like, what I meant by workout it worked out I think that's one of the problems that a lot of amateurs face to be honest with you they, they're worrying about well I'm just gonna play it and I'll deal with what's left absolutely you they know? play points even they they're not thinking yeah. about continuing the rack right it's not not they conducive the obvious shot it's not conducive to high runs that was a very nice shot there that solves that problem he should be good. And it's too hard almost to call the end of the rack here. It is. Because he can do anything he wants. All right, well. something like that. We know he, the 10 ball is a break ball here. So I think I go 9, 
four, thirteen. Yeah, I like coming one rail. In between the ten and thirteen. Absolutely right. There you go. Oh, he didn't want to put too much draw on it though. It's okay. Well, then again, he loses the key ball. He just makes the rack that much harder to get out of, you understand? Absolutely. You know what so I'm saying? What I see here, just roll the two in, four ball uh, I like going in the corner. If he's, he's gonna go two rails on a thirteen. Yeah, I was gonna say I might have liked going one rail and back down. But the angle, he's got a different angle than it looks. See, he might have to play the 13, come two rails. A little bit of right hand, oh, left hand spin. He hit it nice. And this could be a, I can't tell the angle he's got, but a high right or high left. He didn't put any left or right on it at all. Right, right. So that's why I liked hitting the four. I would have taken, I guess, a chance and hit the four, play the four rather, in the bottom right hand pocket and develop the 13 ball as a key ball. Well, you that's come two balls and out. That's the thing with, that's the thing with, that's the thing with, right, well, you're taking know, a chance. That's what I said, that's, I would've taken a chance. Yeah, I gotta work with you one day, Lou. Yeah, I need help. We gotta get it straight now, <laughs> I can see. I, I need a pen, anyway, you got paper and a pen, I got a list of seven different things over here I can touch on. And that's the other thing, too, I talked to someone the other day, you know, Pat Byrne from, Beisha, uh, from Rax, yeah. Guy by the name of Pat Brown. He just won, I think, the, the Rax League. Okay. I think. Oh, he did. He did. Yeah. Yes, I he sat did. with him for 15 minutes at the bar discussing a certain particular shot that he had a problem with, with the break. Oh. And he said it worked It worked like a one, It worked like a charm for him. And it, I don't know if that was the reason he won it, but it, it helped him win the season finale well, of the Street Pool League. Well, i next time I see him. If you see him, ask him. I'm going to say he owes you some money. I, I was joking with him. I said, I'll, beer. I said, I'll take, I'm going to take 10%. All right, that sounds about fair. <laughs> but yeah, people don't realize. I mean, it's not that you have to do a tremendous amount. If you tweak your game, one little thing, that's really all you have to do. Absolutely. Understand why this will work, and then just apply it. You don't have to learn how to develop a, you know, you know, a, a four rail draw stroke with inside jacked up. You don't need that. One little thing, change the mindset. And again, I don't, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You know, I'll show you, but I'm going to explain to you why it works. Why, to me, that's the whole thing. Why, in this particular right. instance, why you need to do this. Not just how to do it. That, that does nothing. This way you can develop it on your own, during your own games, and you can see, oh, now I know why. Right. And when I get into that position again, oh, I know this is going to work. Like you were explaining to me, the certain break shot. Yeah. You're hitting it a certain way to not get stuck on the pack. You're always going to have a little something to get off. Right. You want that one ball roll Any, off. Anyone can tell you how to do it. But well, why does it? That's the key. You have why to learn why. Work? Why does it work? Well, it works because of this. Oh, oh, I get it. And then that, that shot is no longer a problem for you. It's a tool you get to put in your bag and take with you. So from here, it looks like he's thinking a lot. Ideally, nine would be a nice shot to re-break here, but... That doesn't look like an option, so I don't know if he's going to roll a two and try to get on the four or eight in the side pockets. Nope. I don't he's, know. He's, he's going after... He's got to play the four now. Yeah, okay. I mean, not unless there's a dead one. Nope. I mean, it's pretty obvious that nine was a good ball to re-break It could have been, yes. It could have very well been. And still can be. And oh, he's, see, now he's going aggressively. He's going to bank and stop his rock. Love it. There we go. Yeah. That's aggressive. That's Ooh, right there. <laughs> He's got to be careful. If he comes off the 13, the top of the 13, he could glance off the 8 and come way up table. Well, here's where I want to mention something that Tony Robles likes to emphasize in his clinic. He came off the bottom of it. And for anybody interested, uh, Tony's going to have a straight pool clinic here on September 6th, I believe, at Amsterdam Billiards. I highly recommend you contact Tony or Amsterdam for information about that clinic. But yeah. Tony does not like going into balls unless he knows where the cue ball is going and what's going to happen after going into the balls. Right. That's one of his strengths. Absolutely. And again, it's a simple concept. You know, what's the cue ball going to do next? You right. know what I'm saying? What, what's going to happen after I shoot? A lot of people will find the correct shot with the right English at the right speed, but they don't know what's going to happen after you right. shoot. 
And that's, that's that kills nine nine percent of the people. And okay. that's something Tony I don't you know? think ever does. He, he he's very meticulous. He does not go into balls without having an idea of of well, what's going to happen next. He has Obviously, a plan. We, he has a plan. He has a plan. You know, Obviously, my, plans don't always have to work. Well, but no, but you go into it. With you got to have plan. a plan. Right. You know, my brother always tells me he's like the Russians don't even take a dump without a plan. <laughs> you got to have a plan, and then work the plan. Oh, and that that's nice it. Shot. That's the whole thing. You know, you got a little bit of a plan. Now you know what you're going to do. Have faith that you know what you're doing. You got to have and stick, confidence. And stick to it, right? No, Play it's not confidence. even. You got to have confidence, but you got to have the belief that you, you can do it. That's the whole thing. That's a big. It's a big. It's a big thing for a lot of people. They have to have the belief that they can do this. Shit, I'm living proof of that. Well, we know that. Well, yeah, you're that's the guy. What I mean. I, you, that's all you talk about. I, hey. And I, I remember you being interviewed last year in the uh, World Tournament, and that's something you emphasized. Hey. That carried you yeah. that far yeah. well, in that, that I, tournament. That's what I mean. Uh, literally, how close was I to making it to the finals at a World Straight Pool Championship? It's an amazing run. Amazing but you got to have belief that you, that you can do it. And I was talking to Tony the week before. We were playing at his house. I beat him, the t I think, twice before the tournament. And I keep telling him, like, you know, I got confidence in my game. If I don't give it away, no one's got to beat me. Absolutely. So if I can just not give it to somebody, like I said, I'm always helping the other guy out. <laughs> right? But if I don't give it away, no one's got to beat me. So it looks like he's going to play the 3-14-8. This is in pattern here. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm surprised by that, but okay. Oh, good. I don't think that's the way he wanted to play it, but... Yeah, I thought he was going to play it in his lower left-hand pocket. He might be able to play a skid shot on the... On the what is that, the 10? Uh, that's 14. 14. 14. He might have to play like a skid shot. So off roll it with inside. Otherwise, you got to come way up and down. Well, he's got to bank the 8 now. He likes well, to be aggressive. We know he's not afraid to bank balls. He's a little off angle. He might have to end up coming down to the end rail and come back up with the cue. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I, I kind of almost like... <laughs> he's going to go up and down table. Yeah, that's tough. Let's see yeah. how he makes out. The eight well, ball is a good break ball, too. He no, can shoot the it's, one. It's, it's, well, no, he can shoot the one, not. come out two rows. He's going to, right, but it's, it's definitely not a good break shot. Well, I don't think he shoots the eight here. No. He's got to well, shoot no, the one. No, I mean, to, come on. And this, it, is, this, is the, this is the other thing, too. I mean, it's got to work you, out right. You have right. to understand what you have. He hit and, that as know, good as he could. That was a nice shot. Yeah, but I don't know if he can hit the stack. Well, I think the key here is just almost want to roll it in and graze off of that top ball. Yes. But then, what we, happens? We what do you exactly. have after that? Again, you have to see how much of that ball he's going to hit. Oh, he might have enough. He might have enough. This, might be, this might be fine. See the yeah. angle? With the, with the eight just sitting out in space, it looks like it's above the rack. I think this is fine. He can almost hit this with speed. Yeah, he could probably hit the one here. But he may be. But he can hit this with speed. He's good, though. Yeah, he glanced off. Ah. It. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's brutal. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Well, you work here. There's Sean's telling us he got some funny scratches. You have to fix the table, Sean. What's the story, man? You know, how big is that pocket, man? <laughs> Somebody was shooting free throws into that before. All right, so here Dell has another opportunity. I he's know gonna, he's happy to get out of the chair, and he has a yeah. makeable ball here. He's going to smash into him. Yeah, Dell's not afraid to uh, let his stroke out, no. that's for sure. He's got to do this control. There you go. Yeah. Five balls there. He's got the five, yeah. See, that could have turned out horrible, actually. But he's got to go into him. He's got the five. He's got to stay under control. If he can just calm down a little bit, 
He's still in a match. He's 69 to 53. Absolutely. He's trailing, but. Dell's never out of it. Yeah, either one of these guys are capable of running the set out from here. He's got a lot of work to do here, Mike. Yeah. Well, all right. You know what they say, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. I like maybe rolling the three and coming down under the eight and playing the ten. Have a little bit of angle to play the eight. Let me be nudge into the ball. Try and... He used every part of that pocket to make that three. Yeah, I didn't... And uh, I think there's a trap down there on that 10 ball. I mean, you got to hit that hard enough to maybe break up those balls and have a shot on the 8 afterwards, or I don't know. Hard to, hard to say what he's going to do from it, here. Yeah, it is. It's hard to see the angles, too, you know, and based on the angle, that'll tell you what to do or what you can do. He might play the, you know what I like, play the 8-10 combo. That's an option. You know? It's off the rail enough. Yeah, yeah. Pockets are generous. It's close enough, sure. But we'll see what he does. He's going to have to do something. I don't necessarily like the 13 from him. If he's got no angle, if he's got a small angle to go between the 9 and 11, maybe. No, he went the other way. So here's where I always get stuck. I'm I interested to see what happens here. He could still throw it forward and still have the eight, I think. Oh, he might hit it hard. Hold it. Yeah. Oh, that worked out nice. Yeah, see? And he, he even developed a nine ball. Yeah, a yeah. he hit shot. that too hard. Yeah, the key there was he hit the nine. Yeah. And he didn't go into both balls. He just hit the nine alone. All right, here's a shot. He rolls the eight in, and then you can play the two in the corner or the seven in the corner. Again, you really don't want to do that. Yeah, but he's close enough to the ball. It's, it's an option. He's a great shot maker. Uh, uh, he was able to punch out the two. Good hit. Yeah, he didn't want to go up table. He elected for the 11 ball in the he, corner. He might be in a little bit of a jam because I don't know if the two goes past the 15. Uh, he's going to have to play. Uh, I guess the 11 goes in. 11 goes by the four. Try to develop it, it might have made it worse. I think he made it worse. And now that the, the that ball is gone, the four is going to be gone. He's going to have that many less chances to go into it. Oh, there you go. Going out. Ooh, that nice works. Good nudge. shot. Good, Good hit. shot, Dale. He had the right angle on that ball to go into it. He should be good now. Nine's going to be the break shot. He's got to get the 12 out of there. Well, he's asking now Zion if it's in or out. From here, it looks like it's out to me. Zion seems to indicate that it's clearly outside. Uh, really, the only shot he's got to worry about is the 12. Yeah, I didn't like that. Well, that's like not that. bad. He no, improved it. He, he didn't know if it was in the rack or not, and he wanted to make sure it was out. I don't. Probably hit it a little harder than he wanted to. I don't think there was any reason to do that. And again, you know, one of the one of the keys to good pool is if, if balls aren't touching, don't move. you know, don't go into them. You can only create problems. That's the baseline, you know. There are situations where you have to go into them. There are situations where uh, no matter what happens, you should never go into it, you know, but. So this is interesting here. See, yeah, this I, is, uh, I probably would have rolled that ball in, played the seven up table, and then the six back down. And He's going to play a stop shot and just drift towards the side rail. He tried to draw it up, didn't like it, Ooh. don't like it. See, he's getting into trouble at the end of his racks. He's got to get his new cue, too. Whoever's making that cue for him. Yeah. I don't want to put the heat on you, but, you know, let's get this guy. <laughs> let's stick that straight. Well, and I'll tell you what he was probably trying to do there, Mike, was uh, when he pocketed that last ball was not just a 12 up towards yeah. the side pocket. Yeah, yeah. or up table. Or up table. 
but ideally side pocket, and then again, you can just float it in. But again, a lot of yeah, things have to go right. That's why. I mean, if you don't have to go into them, don't. Right. And look, see, now he's taking his break shot because he can't do anything with the 12. He's trying to hit the 12 now. Sean Morgan thinks there's a hanger here, folks. Sean Morgan Busted makes this. Busted through a side with two rails. He, right. he lives for shots like this. Low right, low right, two rails. So, Sean, one of these days... We have to have some interleague play with the Amsterdam League and the Bayshore Billiard Straight Pool League. I, I've been trying to make that happen for a while. You're the director. I know Steve Kurtz out in Bayshore. Maybe one day we'll get, you know, four players from here. Kind of like a, yeah. From different, you know, different groups, you know, gold division, silver division. Make something happen. Yeah. Oh! You know, that's so far, that's two we put in the stands. He's getting all of them, man. But again, when you have to do something like that, that's when... Things go... Yeah, simple, right. simple, simple. He did, good. wow. And you see how crazy it was? got aggressive. Oh, he wanted to just clip the one. He gave a really good effort. That's odd, that's odd. He had ball in hand, that's odd. I don't like this. Yeah, I don't like that. He's got the nine. I think. Uh, he's got the nine. Unless he's frozen, it's hard to say. I can't see from here. Got a five? That is a Oh, no, no rail? Wow. Oh, he might not even have the nine. I don't know if the five hit. I didn't notice. I don't think it did. I think they said it was a foul. Yeah. Uh, Dell's in a pretty good spot right here. Oh, he left him a 14. Wow. I like Zion's aggressive play. I know most people would say that's not traditional street pool. Or, no, but, but from where he's at there, you got to shoot that. Listen, the man can play banks and you got to shoot he's that. He's confident in yeah. the shots. That's what makes the game fun. And enjoyable to watch. But and I might be in the minority and, well, there. <laughs> and, and enjoyable to commentate, to be honest yes. with you. So from here, I think he's got to play the 1-9 and get going position to him. on that 10 to yeah, break these balls. Ten, yes. I like coming down a little below the 10. Yes. Now, right, here's a, little, a situation little, little where, more than that. where Tony would study this rack a little bit and not yeah. just go down and shoot him like most of us do. He's going to go off the 3, into the 8, into yeah. the 13. And I was just going to say, he might have the 13 as his next shot. Cause he went right over it. He, he did. He hit it a little harder than I anticipated. But yeah, well. he could have opened those up and probably had the 13 as his next shot. And he still might have it. I don't know. Well, now he's got to work, uh, work at a break. And that's the thing about hitting him too hard. Well, and, and then you, you scatter the you balls. You scatter all the over. balls. You push everything up table. You eliminate a lot of break shots. Yep. Now he's only literally he's only got maybe one or two balls that he can use as a break shot, or Absolutely. he can work into a break shot. And I'd he's rather gotta, have six or seven. He's got to manufacture something. And so here's how I see the table right now, Mike. I might play the 13 and try to manufacture something right now with the 3-7, knowing that I got the 15 ball on the side, possibly I think, a two in a corner. I think he might be too thin. He's going to hit the three or the seven too much. Well, he did exactly what I thought. How about wasn't thin enough then? It yep. was a good shot, yeah, like I said. That's yeah, that's how I saw it. Absolutely. I thought, to me, it looked like it was too thin. And he did have the 15 or two as insurance. Yeah, well, no, you saw it absolutely correct. And you don't want to wait until the end of the rack that, to address that's, it. Yep. No, but he had the shot and he had got to shoot it from there. My point was, like I said, if I looked a little too thin, yeah, you could miss him good. entirely. Well, not, not missing, but not missing. But when you hit the seven, there's too much speed. It's going to knock the seven to the side rail. Ah. It's going to push it out of a break shot. And he hit it perfectly. Yeah, you got one, Lou. Hey, well, hey one Lou, out of Lou, ten isn't bad. Lou's on the board, folks. <laughs> He's on the board. Well, Zion's got a good shot here. You can play the two and nudge the three down just a touch if you don't like the seven as a break.
I think see, it's gonna... this is a problem I have in my game, too. You see how he shot that six ball off? Yeah. I commit so much to key balls and break balls sometimes to uh, to a fault. You right. Know? He didn't even think twice about it. And to your point, you know, he's confident in his game, and he knows he can get where he needs to be yeah. at the last three yeah. four balls of the rack. Yeah, he, he he had a little pucker pucker factor going on there. But yeah, no, he got out of that pretty good. Yeah, and that's like you said, you know, you, you sort of shot to, to push out the break shot. You know what you can ha what you can do. You know what you can work with. Yep. You can, like I said, you have to see the table. That's what the table said. Right. You got to play and, this and roll it a little bit. And, and in that situation, what I liked was he had a lot of insurance balls. So, again, coming from behind, sometimes yep. you get stuck because you don't have those insurance balls. That early in the rack, he did. He's got no break shot as of yet. He's got the cluster in the center he's got to work with. So he tried to push yeah, the 12 out just, for a break shot, which he did. He just improved the 12. And if he could get on that six ball, he could break open that stack there. That I cluster. think he goes into it now with the 10. See, I don't like that. Because what do you do when you go underneath? What do you have next? You're hoping you have the 9? Yeah, you're going to have the 9. If he comes up into the 4, if he hits the right side of the 4, the mm -hmm. 4 is going to glance off the 8. He'll have the 9. Well, and the Q will stop on the 13. Why not he doesn't have to the kill this that hard. And then go into the nine, uh, use the nine. See yeah. what I mean? I guess I wouldn't have played that, but point taken. Yeah, to me that was the, that was the the shot. Just like you saw the angle on the last one. Right. To me that was obvious. Well, and that's the beauty of this game too. See how different players get out and what they do. You know. It's yeah. Really limitless. I had the privilege of calling a match with my good friend Sean Wilkie. We did a world straight pool tournament when it was in Carum a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember the two players. If I'm not mistaken, it was, I think it was Efren Reyes and Darren Appleton. Oh. I think. I know Efren was definitely one of them. And you're almost sitting there not knowing what to do. Because Efren, the call Efren, well, magician, Efren especially, yeah. I, I, no I don't know what he's going to do next. No. I could tell you what he might do. And then he comes with the shots. In fact, it might have been him. They played this game. We actually had to tell people that it wasn't a game of one pocket. Oh, because they play safe after safe after safe, and they pushed everything up table. Oh, and they wow. still kept getting safe behind the stack of like two balls on the pile. Amazing. That was it. Everything was up table. Well, like, folks, this is not one pocket. We're watching a straight pool game here. Well, and here goes Zion. He's going to chip these away. Yeah, 8, I think 15, 11. Patent, 8, 15, 11, and he's into another rack. Yeah, he's up close to 100 now. I'm not sure how many he has of this rack. He's got the whole thing. So, yeah, that's going to give him uh, 107. Yeah. And he's on a run of 25. This is going to be nice. It should be stop, stop. Oh, he's going to have 96 as his score, I guess, right? Okay. And he's on a run of, uh, what was it, 27? 27. On a run of 27? This might be it for Dell. Zion said enough, enough. Well, we'll can't see. Give, Don't can't give Dell any more chances. Well, that's for sure, and um, if he does get another chance, um, Dill, again, is capable of uh, running out the set. There's no doubt in my mind. He could do it, and he's done it against me. I needed four balls last time I played Dell. I, yeah. He ran 40 and out. I watched that. That uh, was I lost a lot of sleep over that match. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember if I had to turn that one off or not. What? That actually is a learning experience for you. 100%. Because now you know 
You have to work on your end patterns better. Well, what happened That's in the match with Dell, I actually had a very tough shot up the table, which I made. And there was a, um, what I thought was a wired ball. Yeah. Oh. And uh, nobody's better at killing dead balls than me. Yeah, no. <laughs> it was dead. I just threw it out. So. You know what the golden... Oh. Wow, that just popped out. He, he might have stroked it too hard. Well, I think what he was trying to do is develop an angle on the seven. He was a little you straighter don't than he wanted to. You don't need. And absolutely. You don't need. But I think that's what he was trying to do, was to develop yeah, a little well, better angle well, on the seven. What did I tell you? All right, one of my teaching points, if you ask Santa Claus for too much, you get nothing, right? <laughs> don't ask Santa for too much. He's trying to do too much. Simple, simple. Santa don't like greedy pigs, you know what I'm saying? Take your one or two gifts and move on. You know, think about East is coming. So he has a one ball that he can re-break with, it looks like. Um, or 13 if he gets a good angle on I it. I don't like the 13 as a re-break. I do, and I'll tell you why. Because it looks uh, like he might be able to get into the 3-4 and carry him off that 11, which would it's, really it's, open them all it's up. It's a little bit of a risky shot. I mean, he has it. He can play it. Exactly what it's he's looking just that at. You don't know what he's got next. You tell me what he's going to shoot next. Okay, I can tell you. I think the three ball will develop as a shot in the corner if he carries off of this stack the right way. Well, he three missed ball the three. in the corner. See, he missed the three. But that's that's my whole point. Yeah, but you he, know, he, it's it's risky. But meanwhile, he still opened them up fairly yeah, well. No, he, he did. has a two ball. I like going from the two to the six right now. Takes yes. care of the six, opens the eleven. He'll have like an angle that. on the four. Might yeah, be a little like short that. there. Well, the three I think could have been his break shot. It certainly could. That's definitely out. You know, if he plays to get on the six, from the six he goes on to the four. Four gets him to the eight. Eight goes past the seven, or even on the seven. Oh, he's gonna open him up with the four. Oh, he might have it now. All right, good hit. Now he's got to go one rail to get on the five or the ten. I like getting on the ten from here. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. I didn't like it. And again, still no okay. need. There's no need. I agree. But they still go. Left ball yeah. still goes in the corner. But I understand your point. You didn't have to run into him now. Now he's kind of jacked up, shooting over the eight. What's he going to have next? The one? That's the only shot he can shoot for. 10-5. You know what I'm saying? Is, uh, is a makeable combo, but again. Well, yeah, it could be. could be. Like you said, it could I, be wired. I see what you're saying. What are you going to do next? That's I would think what, the 10 yeah. would be next. What are you going to do next? What's going to, you know. Well, and that's a, I was just going to say, he shot off the one, and you really got to address that 6-11. He's got to play the 11 here, I think. Good scratch off the, off the 11. Oh. All right, he's a little higher up on the rail, but now look what he's got. The 10-5, ten, the ten he might have to play it. Yeah, that's what he's looking at right now. And like what you said, you know, you're, not, you're the only guy who kills more dead balls, right? That's me. You know what, the, one of the, <laughs> well, one of the, the primary rules of straight pool or any game never shoot a dead one that's not dead right but what i did was i you threw know. it out huh? oh what do we got here yeah, this ain't good. I'll well, tell i don't you. see a problem here he's going to play the three into the ten ten ten's going in three's going to glance up just a slight little bit and the cue's going to drift forward four inches and he's going to stay in the round there you go Or he's going to play safety up table. Oh, that works. Yeah, you know, you said that kidding around. I did. But that but was I, an actual yeah, viable well, option there. Yeah. Sometimes you see the that. The three you ball would have came off. Yeah, yeah. He could have just rolled his cue ball into the and rack. Into the stack. Which and is the three something came we out. often overlook. Yeah. By pros and amateurs alike. Yeah, <laughs> well. I'm going to give a shout-out to Amsterdam right now while we're here. You guys, if you guys are anywhere near New York, man, you got to come down to Amsterdam Billiards. Come play Sean Alaska Morgan, man. You guys got to come down here. The Absolutely. Guy is, he's a monster. You guys know Sean. Come I, on, man. He runs one of the greatest leagues in the country. 
Absolutely, and I refer to this place as the Madison Square Garden, a pool. But I also want to give a shout out to my homeroom, Bayshore Billiards. They got a lot of great straight pool players out there. They love the game. And uh, just shout out to all my buddies out there, Steve Kurtz, Neil Gold, Mike Fingers, the whole crew out there. And uh, we're definitely overdue for interleague play. So yeah, we got to work on that. Hopefully we'll make that happen. Yeah. That was great. Why not? King of the Hill, King of the Room. Some kind of tournament thing going on. We've got Zion, Dell, Pascal, myself. I'm gonna make it happen. Steve, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Tony technically lives on Long Island, oh, so we might have to claim you him. You have a point. You have a point. And Dell, he's a hometown boy of Long Island too, so we might have some. <laughs> you guys still interested in it? <laughs> you, you know, you're, and we got Mike. Your roster. And I got Neil like, Gold. <laughs> the more we talk, you know, the weaker you guys. We're looking good. <laughs> Long Island's looking good. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to recruit Thorsten and Nico. Then. You might oh, have to. Oh, we're done. And and well, don't forget my all-time favorite, local favorite, Steve Lipsky. I mean, oh, he's an amazing go. player. As always. You know, for as long as I've known Steve, I've never played him straight pool. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna I'm gonna share something with everybody here. The number one reason why I joined this league last year was to play Steve Lipsky. I saw Steve Lipsky, uh, he gave a tribute to Danny Baruti when he entered the Hall of Fame, and I was so impressed by it. I was like, wow, this guy doesn't realize it, but I think he's the new Danny Baruti of Amsterdam. And I wanted to play him. Um, unfortunately, I didn't last year, and he's not on the schedule this year, so. I guess I got to sign up again next year. And you might have hopefully, to. we match up. But uh, why wouldn't he play this year? We're just not scheduled to play oh, each other okay. this year. But I uh, really like Steve's game and really nice guy. Yeah, I know Steve for a long time, long time. I'm going back 20, 30 years back to leisure time billiards in Levittown. You guys might, some of you guys out there might know that place. Yep. And uh, I knew him from then. Play yeah, a nine ball before he started to play straight pool. Yeah, I think that's where Steve Kurtz and Charlie Ames know him uh, from as well. But yeah, I never never got a chance to play him straight pool yet. Awesome player. Fun to watch too. Oh, that was a really nice shot. Yeah, he's good from here. High ball. So what happens here after he makes this nine ball? This is what Tony advises I that think, you pay attention yeah, well, to I think and not cue, just go into them. I think the cue is going to glance off the 15 and go in between the, the 11 7. Well, he never hit the 15, but it's still went right between the 11 7. And you got to see what's going to go next. You know, where, where, are, where are balls going to get pushed out to? Right. You know? And, and Tony's I, really good at doing that. Absolutely. And again, Tony has a clinic on September 6th here at Amsterdam Billiards. Um, contact Tony or Amsterdam to enroll in that. Um, it's definitely yeah. worth the price of admission. Yeah, if you guys get a chance, he's one of the greatest. And he's one of the best teachers in the country. So Absolutely. I would highly, highly recommend. If you can do it, come on down. You're going to learn a lot. So, as I said, before he went into the stack there, what's going to happen next? You can't just simply go into him. And unfortunately, he has a... Really tough shot on the eight, which he uh, proceeded made it. the pocket. Just, just made it. I think the pocket moved to the left a little bit. It, just, <laughs> it did a little wiggle and it. Did uh, it shimmy? It might have. I thought it moved. It, it went for a catch. It did. It kind of leaned over a little bit. It's like the catcher, yeah, when it's a low pitch, you know, miraculously the glove comes up like six inches, hey? What do you mean it was a low? Look where the glove is. Yeah, Zion's plugging away, 102 to 75. Again, I'm surprised by the score. Dell's still in this. Yeah, he, yes, absolutely. It seems like Zion's running away with it, but it's, it's certainly within reach yeah. of Dell. and then Zion will make a simple mistake like he did here. I think, I don't know if the six goes. Well, yeah, he does have a shot still. He might have the three also. But... Again, this is not the type of shot you want to shoot all day long. Absolutely not. Wow. 
he hit that with bass and inside English. Very nice. Looks like he may have the five. Yeah. The five may pass the two. Hard to tell from this angle, but he's shooting it. He's shooting it. It probably goes. There you go. Probably goes. Yeah, well, when everything is clicking and the guy's in stroke, they do have a tendency to make it look easy. Yeah, I think he was trying you know. to fall on that 12 ball. And if he didn't, he did have escape balls there with the 13 and even the 2, which I don't think would be the shot he would want to take, but he fell on it perfectly. All right, we got two break shots now, Mike. You got the 15 and what looks like the four. Yeah. But I you got a little mini cluster there. Yeah. He can get on a three from here. If he gets on the three, he should be good. He could push that 13 over. Right. He's got to decide what he wants to do next. That's my. That's what I. That's what I'm big on. Right. What's he do after he plays a three? You know, does he does he have an angle for another shot? Does he, does he want to play the 15 now and leave the 4? So here's something else I do, <laughs> which probably isn't the right thing to do, but I, I find myself in these situations playing shots like, you know, the 13 and let's assume the 1 goes in the side or in the corner pocket here, where I leave my cue ball in the middle of the table somewhere and choose either the 4 or 15 and come yeah. out two rounds. Yeah, so I leave my two break shots. That's, and select yes, one of them as a keyboard. That is not a bad option. That is not a bad strategy because each one will lead you to the other one. Absolutely, naturally. You know, yeah. If you're in the middle of the table. Um, this way is a little more work involved, but I don't right. think the one in that situation had an easy pocket for him to work with. So that might not have been the best example. He's got to be careful here too. He's going to play this if he stays above Oh, hey, yeah. just oh, like you said. I was going to say, like you said, you called it. And again, relatively simple shot. He had to force it to get him an angle on the 13. Because if he played for the one and he's high, he's going into the four. Right. All right, you so know? here comes Dell back to the table. I think he's going to play for the two next here. I think yep. it naturally went for the two, yeah. It naturally lends itself. That made itself. sense. Now, he can soft roll this. I, I almost kind of like coming back and playing the one in the side or the corner. Yep. He... Good shot. He hit that really good. Yeah. If you try to soft spin it for inside, like I said, you get above the one. You don't have to get a good angle on it, and you can knock the four out. Yeah, and meanwhile, he's a little straighter than he might have wanted to be on this shot. He's going to step out. Yeah, he's going to take a quick break. Again, guys, just wanted to mention Straight Pool Clinic will be held here at Amsterdam Billiards September 6th. Um, hosted by Tony Robles. Contact Tony or yeah. Amsterdam for information about that. And if you are on Facebook and watching this stream, uh, I run a Straight Pool Hey, there we are. I don't know if we're on, but hey, yeah, I think we're on. I run a uh, straight pool uh, page on Facebook called Straight Pool Fanatics. So yeah. be sure to look us up. If you get a chance, go to the page. You got a lot of league players on there, in addition to um, some pros like Thorsten is on there, John Schmidt comments uh, frequently, yeah, Tony well, Robles. You got Mike. a lot of the pros making comments and suggestions or yeah. tips or. And that's what I love about the you know? page is that they, they interact with us on that page, uh, offer advice, and um, actually give kudos every once in a while when somebody posts, hey, I had a high run of 50 yeah. balls. Uh, don't be surprised if John Schmidt or Thorsten uh, wishes you well yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, they give yeah. you congratulations. It's nice. Yeah, Dell's got to, I think he's got to wash his eyeballs or something. Yeah, 
that Dell will be all right. You know, he's got to uh, he's got to refocus himself. He's not out of it yet, but he's got to tighten his game up a little bit. Hey, there's one other straight pool league guy I want to give a mention to, and that's Mike Grosso out in Dallas, Texas, I believe. He also is a frequent uh, contributor to Straight Pool Fanatics and another Straight Pool League director. So shout out to all the Straight Pool League directors out there, Sean Morgan, yeah. Steve Kurtz, Mike Grosso, uh, and also Dennis Walsh out of Chicago. So shout out to those guys for keeping the game alive. Yeah, thank you, fellas. Yeah, he's going to draw this. He's going to end up way up table, I bet you. Yeah, I like oh, the way he no, hit that. He elevated slightly. Got more side spin than draw. Which yes, was a he good did. Shot. That was an excellent break. He didn't get a great break off from it. And that's. The table hasn't really been cooperating, I'd have to say. Yeah, well, you know what I like from here is playing the one ball, hitting it with a little pace. He's got to come playing up. Playing the nine. Yeah, he's going to have to come up one or two rails. Yeah, just like the, oh, I don't I like that. He has to get lucky here, and he may have. Well, he may not have. I would have just yeah, slid yes, across the yes. top and then play the nine and regroup. You had the ten there, yeah, he the did, eight he ball there. Yeah, he did have other options, I, I believe, a thousand percent. Because now he's got to play an awkward shot on the six. He's not sure if he's going to have a shot next. He's jacked up. Should make it, but wow. Yeah, he's, he's not really uh Nope, fine. He's, he's definitely not the Dell that we all know and love. Yeah, but... Well, maybe end. love is just too strong a word, but... <laughs> I love we, the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got a kid, right? Doesn't he look like the guy from Amerit E.T. Ameritrade? I Coach McAdoo. Know. I don't know who you're you know, referring come to. On. I'll have to look. TD Ameritrade. No, I don't know. The guy that talks about going, taking your trading from Main Street to Wall Street, or from Wall Street to Main Street with a beard. I TD Ameritrade. Know. I'll look it up. You got to look it I'll up. I'll look it up, Mike. He is that guy. So here's a good opportunity to go into balls and have I some know. insurance, but he didn't. He, he, off did, he went into him a little funny. Yeah, he had the 8 and the... Uh, Looks like that 12 ball, this insurance ball is there. But he spun off of. So, looks like the 11 ball would be an ideal brick shot, but he might have to he sacrifice might have to play that now. now. I, like, I like playing the 5. But you know what? He could still play the 11. Get on the 8 and maybe manufacture something there with the 13, 14, and have the 12 or 5. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy about that because he's still he's not really in a great position here. Yeah, I would have liked to be a little lower with the cue ball here to go into those. Two I would have rolled the five in. The cue would have glanced into the eleven, pushing to pass the eight towards the corner. He either would have had the eight, the eleven, or the seven. That's an And option. then the hole was open for the three. And then once that's open, he can play the thirteen and have the fourteen as his break shot. Okay, now he's got to play a he's got to play a combination. Oh wow! Yeah, this is getting tough. Correct, right? Am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's making a mess. See, a lot of times when players they look at the rack, they don't realize. There's a certain trouble area that you have to take care of first, okay? And people don't kind of they don't kind of get that. If you would have if you would have did the shot I suggested, maybe playing the five first instead of the eight, you wouldn't be in this position right now. So now he's got to play his break shot. The three ball might not even move. If he comes forward, I don't think the three is even going to move. He, he's maybe maybe he's got to bank the 13 one rail. To get that as a, as a as a break shot. See the 13, is it up? Is it going to go up? Oh, um, it did. So 13 it, works. Yeah, but look where he's at. He's got to play a hard draw shot on the three. He's pretty pretty straight in. It's a small pocket, and if you hit the facing, it can come out. But he, he got out of it. He got out of it really good. Now he's got a simple shot nice on the shot. five. One rail up. 
Two rails. One. I think I think position, the angle, I think, I think it's, it's two. Well, you meant those two rails? Yes. <laughs> I would have never those, done that. Those were the two. <laughs> well, I thought well, you're coming in two rails no. and out. This, you can't. It's too, like I said, it's too thin exactly. of a cut. Right. But you know? I think you could have simply no. rolled it no. one route. But again, no. these are the mistakes that I make. So. Well, that's just it. I mean, if you're trying to just simply roll it in, to be honest with you, that's that's a skid waiting mm -hmm. to happen. A soft roll like that, right. that's a skid. Okay? Let it roll. Let the cue ball go. It's going to go right. up and down anyway. You eliminate the skid. The, ra the racks are definitely not coming apart. Yeah, he was stuck in there. If not for that nine ball coming off yeah. the bottom rail and setting him free, he would have yeah. been stuck. I picked up something from, I think it was uh, Blair Lewandowski from Bayshore. Uh, someone had told him something. I think it was Tommy Walters, who plays amazingly. The guy is 61, I think. Yep. And he plays an amazing game of straight pool. And I think it was him who said... In order to be successful at straight pull, you have to go into the rack with character. I like that. Meaning you got to have high or follow or some kind of movement with the cue ball. You just can't let it like Thud. die in there. It's got to have some kind of action. It's got to have character to it. And yes. I like that. I like that. It's, it I makes like a that lot phrase. of sense. And I see a lot of league players, and um, I'm guilty of this too sometimes, you sacrifice going into the rack with character, yeah. as you put it to ensure that you make the ball. It's, and then yeah. you make the well, ball and you got nothing after. What's, what's the what's sense the of making a ball? Right. And that's why I'll be honest with you, I like my mindset when I play. I go out there every time I play, I think to myself, you know, I could have a high run right here. And I just try real hard. There ain't anyone on the planet that's got more heart than I do. Well, nobody tries harder either. That's that's you, what I mean, you know. You it's play with intensity. Everything that needs something, denied. and that's how you get better. Doesn't it feel good when you run your high ball? When you get your high run? Absolutely. Right? Doesn't it feel good when? You, hey, look at what I just did. I just got out of that rack. Did you see that? You know, or you win a nine ball match, or you win a, a tournament, or you win a whatever. It makes you feel great. I love it myself. So he's got a lot of work to do here again, Mike. I mean, he's got the eight ball, which I think he's going to shoot off next. He's got to get the seven out. I got to get the seven out, which would free that 14, which could potentially manufacture a break ball there with a 10 or five. I think he goes into him with the 11 right now. Yeah, I don't think there's any easy way to get to the seven otherwise. I think he goes into the five, 10 comes off the 14 and the seven. And if it doesn't go too far, he'll have a break shot. Yeah, but the only problem with that is it doesn't ensure a break ball. Yeah, break no, shot. No, no, exactly. Whereas exactly. that seven ball is gone, and you could have played that 14 exactly. easily. He, right. You, you could have developed a break ball. Absolutely. And here's the thing, because at his level, he knows he knows that that could happen. But he's not afraid oh, he tried to, to shoot. He tried to push a 10 out again. But did you see he, what he did there? He went in two rails, and he tried to... Hit the ten. Yeah, try to make to a better side. position. Sure, but he's not afraid to do stuff like that. He right. realizes, you know what? And by the I'll, way, I'll 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 make something happen. I'll make something work here. You know? And the ten ball is still a uh, reasonable well, break shot from here. Yeah, he's like he's just got to get. Ideally, he would have loved to have left the three. And the, the three or the is fourteen. Also, the three is a is a reasonable break shot too. Again, not ideal, but reasonable. Well, I, I like the 14 more than I like the 3. It's uh, a break shot. And I like the 10 more than I like the 14. <laughs> I like I the 14 because as soon as you come off the rail, you're going straight into that end ball. Yeah. And so, you hit it with pace a little bit. You so, can easily glance off the top or bottom and have plenty of shots. So here's the example I was talking about a few racks ago where leaving a ball up table is yeah. not unreasonable for a key ball because you could just about fall anywhere there. All right. Well, he's and got to watch out for the side now. Right. He doesn't want to be on the rail. I think you want to be between the rail and the 10, though, well, you in want this to be, situation. You'd, you'd like to be between the side and the 10. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. The rail and the yeah. 10, which he did. But again, like you said, you had, you had brought it up a couple of times, right? And we only seen it executed once. Right. You know, that tells you it is a shot. 
Right. But again, if you if you if you're thinking that, well, I'm going to do that because that's what I see. A lot of times, it's it's the wrong thought pattern. That gives Zion. Zion's got 135 now. He only yeah, needs so this rack. He needs this rack, and that ball doesn't need to be a break ball. And he does not need a break ball, as Pascal right. points he, out. So he could play wide open here. He could, and I'm going to and not I'm worry about a break ball. Out. Exactly. I'm going to point something out as he goes through the rack because he's going to break these open, and no doubt he's going to develop break shots. Shoot it off. He's shooting them off early. Early, yeah. Because you don't want to leave one, because if Dell gets back to the table, you'd rather see him have to manufacture something right. and instead I'll of leaving him a hang like the 13. He's going to put that off next, I think. He might play the one and the 13. No sense leaving it there. He's still got to break out the, uh, I agree with the 8, 8, 11, and 2. Oh, yeah, get rid of it. Oh, he had the wrong angle. He's going up table, but that's okay. That's right. You got the seven up there. He's got to deal with the six and three, uh, and he's got to break out that small cluster with the eight, which oh, I don't like that at all. Ooh, that was close. Oh my God, I don't like that at all. This late in the game, that was close. That was yeah, that was a mistake. Big big mistake. Do you think he's aware that he only needs this rack to yeah, win, or yeah. is he just no, he knows, he knows. in a rhythm and shooting balls? He knows. Yeah, I think he's well aware. He's going to try and catch inside the, the, the long rail up top now. All right, good recovery. But again, that was way too close to get near that side pocket. Coming off the point. I like rolling into 13. And then what, Mike? Nine? I think yeah. I think I would. Again, I have to see the angle. Right. But I think I like him rolling in in the 13, getting an angle on a nine. Because from here he can go straight up, split the four five. Let's say five will break open the eight and eleven. Yeah, I don't know. He's gonna he'll get have that the, much action. He'll let's have see. the twelve. He can go forward too. I kind of like going straight up, center ball, no forward. Yeah, because he's got to clip, just you hit clip the, five. the five. Right, clip the five. Okay. Nice. Pushes everything right open. Yep. And ordinarily we would say 11 is a good break ball here, but this being the last rack, him needing 15, he might have play to worry about now. shape on the uh, on the break shot here. He's got to get that. Believe it or not, he's got to get that three out. I like playing a three, three right, right now. now. I like playing it right now. There you go. Now everything is, is, is tic-tac-toe any way you want to go. Meeny, meeny, miny, miny. I think he goes up for the five here. Well, he can come up for the 12. Now, see, I always like leaving the 12. When I got a ball up table like that, I like the 12 to help get me back down well, table. That's, that's exactly right. But, but he's again, wide he's open. He's a shot maker. He's wide open. His ability is better than mine. <laughs> he's got options on the five. And he and might he leave, leave that, that last. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. Just in case he gets out of position. A little bit of left here to split the two coming back up. I like the 11. The 11 from here. 11 4. That's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. He's playing. He's playing the eleven like he needs it. And that's why, that's why I was asking. Do you think that's, he realizes I, he just needs this rack? And based he would. on his pattern here, I'm gonna say figured he, he did not. Yes. No, he's racking. I mean, which he well, has he's to anyway. Rack, yeah, he's got a rack anyway. Yeah. yeah, but see, that was. Yeah, he's got 149. He needs the one. Yeah, this is something. He, he's gonna realize it now, but that's fine. I mean, again, he played it, but that's okay. Night. That's the way he should play anyway. In a tournament, though, there's no way I would have left this as my last shot. Right. See, he just realizes now. Yeah. He's surprised. <laughs> We're saying <laughs> we, yeah, we were just we were just criticizing you for that. <laughs> God forbid he misses the 11, right, and breaks everything open. Dell Dell is en en energized well, right there. And here's where I don't think you need to do that, right? You just make the ball. That's all. Yeah, no, I know, but I God forbid you. he missed it. Look, everything's yeah. open. Dell's got a shot. Nice match, guys. Good match. Zion V defeats the Highlander. I score 150 to 80. Dell was in it for most of the match. Yes, he was. It definitely you know. wasn't Dell's best showing, but yeah, well, this happens either. They, they both make mistakes, and 
It's, when you're playing ca these type of caliber guys, whoever makes the least mistakes obviously is going to win. Absolutely. And uh, it, it can go either way any time. But, yeah, I want to thank Lou hey. for being in the booth with me. I appreciate it. I want to thank I wanna, Pascal. I want to thank you guys for letting, me, uh, for letting me do this. It's the first yeah. time I've ever done it, and uh, hopefully I didn't embarrass myself. Well, all the <laughs> negative comments have Lou's name attached, so there you go. I don't know how that happened. But <laughs> Thanks for listening in, guys. I want to thank Sean thanks, Morgan, Sean. too, and I want to thank it. Amsterdam Bays. So I think we might have another match coming up. I'm not 100% sure. That it might be for tonight then. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll probably see you guys next week. So Yeah, one last plug for Pascal. Um, he has some software that you see here with all the stats, 14.1 yeah, engine. Contact him, especially you league directors out there, the ones I mentioned, Steve Kurtz, uh, Mike Rosso, Dennis Walsh. Um, it's an excellent program to incorporate with your league. And uh, if you're interested, contact uh, Pascal. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome software. Thanks it's again, guys. It's amazing. It is. The, the percentages and the, the categories and the charts. And it should be used in pro events. Oh, my God. It's awesome. It's insane. Yeah. One day. I think, I think we'll try to work that. You got it. But Good yeah, night, thanks guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I hope you Thank enjoyed you. it. That was fun. Thank you, brother.